Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, and as a proud member of Space Force, I want to wish all the UFC 234 fighters good luck, especially in their title fights and the Anderson Silva maybe going away fight. Um, guys, who's going to win the fights? The answer's on my shirt. The correct answer. Any old person like me knows the correct answer. Answer, shout out to Sean Patrick Flannery, Hickson by Armbar. That's the correct answer. So, uh, yeah, guys, here in outer space, I just want to do a quick breakdown um, just because maybe some are interested because I've actually been involved with some of these guys before. Um, I trained a couple of them. I uh, shared my videos with a couple, well, one of them, uh, stuff like that. So, Let's talk about the three main build fights on the card. Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gastelum. Israel Adesanya versus Anderson Silva. And Ronnie Yaha versus Ricky Simone. So guys, um, in the middleweight title fight, you got Robert Whitaker, who's been on fire forever, versus Kelvin Gastelum, who's kind of the legend killer. He's definitely taken out big names, both at 70 and 185. Um, and I like Kelvin a lot. I interviewed him before he was really in the UFC, coming off of tough. I think, I believe I emailed him my first uh, MMA, uh, catch wrestling and MMA seminar DVD. So I believe I emailed that, him that, bef the hidden links before I made that for free on my YouTube channel. Um, I, I think I sent it to him and to Tony Ferguson. I know I sent it to Tony Ferg. I think I sent it to Kelvin as well. Um, especially since he's kind of got that wrestling top control style that I thought would be my catch wrestling type stuff would be uh, useful to him for. Robert Whitaker, I coached, I believe, three days back in like 2014 in Koi Samui, Thailand at Super Pro Samui. Um, and I coached him and his guys basically, uh, I think, two days in grappling. Um, I taught, I have five videos. I'm working with his partner, but I'm talking to Robert off camera. I showed them uh, five cool submissions in half guard that most people don't know that I was developing at that time. Um, some really cool stuff. You can find those videos. And um, I believe I had him drill in the cage a little bit once. Um, not that I taught it to him, but I, I remember making him drill how to bounce off the cage to get a chain pull single. And I think it was his next fight or the fight after he did do that. I think it was his next fight. So, um, I mean, not taking anything away from his real coaches, but I, you know, that is something we drilled. And so it was only a few days. Um, I think I have a video of one time he came back from some other training and hopped in while I was teaching the guys some, um, some of my neo striking um, kind of switch stance, shifting combinations and stuff. And that was really before people started to do it. So you can look up those videos. Anyway, guys. Um, I like Kelvin, but I got to go with Whitaker on this. Whitaker going through those two huge battles with Romero has just prepared him to, to be gritty on a grittier level. Not that Kelvin can't dig deep. Not that he's not tough as hell. Um, not that his wrestling can't give Whitaker problems. Not that he doesn't have the slightly greater knockout power. But Whitaker, I mean, the, the, their stats are very equal. But Whitaker does have a higher uh, strike output. And because of that, and mostly because of his wars with Romero, I think he'll be able to pull this one off. Um, his takedown defense is very high, like 84%, something like that. And, you know, Calvin could catch him, maybe cold in the first round, get a knockout. I don't know what's going on with the focus, guys. Hopefully that fixes itself. Why am I a ghost all of a sudden? Let's get the focus back. Hopefully it's coming back, guys. Anyway, um... So if I'm blurry, whatever, you know what I look like. I'm ugly. Um, Kellen could get a knockout in the first round. A lot of guys get knocked out in the first round because their coaches don't do things that I've always done, even with the amateur fighters. We we'll slap them around a little bit, give them some punches, and get them used to rolling. Put their mouth guard in eventually, and then go a little bit harder before they make the walk. People don't do that, and that's why guys get caught cold. And a big part of my reason, they, they, they don't roll at the first punch. They were, oh my God, shocked when they first get clobbered. you got to warm that nervous system up. That's something I always had people do. Um, but overall, my betting money would probably be on Whitaker getting a TKO in the third round. Now, I don't know on these. It's not crazy lopsided, nothing like that. I did call last time I did one of these videos, like almost exactly, exactly... 
um, how Cyborg got knocked out in the first round. I did call that. Boy, I wish it was a better. If you guys listen to them, tell me where I can bet without them giving my credit card info to a third world country or uh, Romania or something six months from now. Where can I bet and it's safe to use my credit card? Is there somewhere safe I can do that? Let me know. Um, if you've won big money because of me on that Cyborg fight, especially if you bet in the first round, I'm sure it was a huge payoff. Let me know. Um, so I would go with Whitaker in the third round, most likely. Um, next up, uh, Israel Adesanya, who I've never met, or Sanderson Silva, who you know I have a bit of a relationship with. I did train a black house for three months, um, basically pretending to be Ryan B Bader, helping the Oda Machida prepare for that fight, which he flawless victory, knocked out Bader in the... Um, Maybe early second round. First round or second round, I forget. Um, at UFC on Fox 4. Anyway, um, Anderson, you know, I've talked to a bunch and I kind of shared some things, you know, a little bit with. And we've done some Chi Sao. You can look up me doing um, Wing Chun Chi Sao with Anderson. I guess the whole room and Dana White and everyone stopped. I guess it like, stopped and became dead silent as me and him were kind of throwing down. Um, and uh, talked to him about stuff like that. I've talked to him about his anchor punch before. And um, one time, uh, Freddie Roach invited me. I was there for Orlovsky way back in Affliction, before Affliction. And I was walking out, and Freddie Roach invited me to come back the next day uh, for training with Anderson Silva. And so I watched that and just kind of, like, paid attention. And at the end of it, Anderson went over. Believe it or not, this is a true story, and I'm not bad about Anderson. He was the greatest of all time at that time and still one of the greatest of all times. Um, you know, especially before John Jones... Uh, really established that, and, and Mighty Mouse even probably took it away from him since Mighty Mouse has never popped. Um, anyway, Anderson was the GOAT at that time, especially, and um, he went over to hit the speed bag. And he couldn't hit the speed bag. He didn't know what he was doing. So I said, excuse me, sir, you know, with respect. I said, dance, dance. So he would get it, and I showed him how I was rocking my feet and flaring my heels. Da -da 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 -da. Not that I'm the best at it. But he, he, I said, rhythm, rhythm, dance, dance. And then he, he started to get it. But it was funny that at the time, the best fighter in the world at the time, didn't know how to hit, hit a speed bag. Um, anyway, Anderson, he's fighting past his prime. He's only won one, I believe, out of his last six fights if we take, take away the Nick Diaz win, which, um, you know, unfortunately, John Jones and Anderson Silva were buying their dick pills in the same 7-Eleven, probably where... Uh, jam by Silent Bob or, or selling weed outside to Nick Diaz. These guys all must hang out at the same same convenience store, I guess. So anyway, that got turned into a no contest, and he's only won one since by decision against Br Bronson, I believe, since then. Um, basically, I'm going to go with Adesanya, either second round TKO or decision two rounds to one for Adesanya, most likely. Having said that, Anderson has two chances, three chances, to, to stun him and change the fight around. His stinging up jab with his right hand is very stingy. Um, if Adesanya, like, rocks Anderson and presses too much, he might walk into that Muhammad Ali anchor punch that Anderson used on uh, to Matrix Stefan Bonner. So um, that and the flying, double flying knee um, that he killed uh, Bisping's nose with, I think, for the end of the third round. Um, those are those are fight turnarounders, <laughs> if you will, for Anderson Silva. Um, so you know Anderson could get it done, but and I hope he gets. It. I mean, honestly, I love both uh, both guys. I think this is a passing of the torch if if Adesanya wins. And and my God, if Anderson did that, so he could really pass this torch to the next Matrixy striker, that's awesome. Um, and if he manages to undo the younger guy because of experience and tricks. I mean, Anderson takes the first minute, minute and a half off, gets the guy's timing. Adesanya might be overwhelmed by this hero that he probably was looking up to when he was a very young kickboxer. So, he's in my armor, of course. Um, just got this. Guys, guess where you can find it? No, I don't make any money off this, uh, Gracie's. Don't shut me down like you did my YouTube channel that was actually paying for all my medications and taking care of my life. Uh, don't do that like you did after Metamorphs footage that I had it for two years with a disclaimer saying if anyone has problems, I'll take it down. And then, boom, um, you know, Halleck must have got me taken down or something or maybe someone else. I'm cool with Hickson as far as I know. Um, you know, I, I talked to him at Ryzen uh, before on New Year's, and um, anyway, 
getting off topic, as old people like me tend to do. Um, I saw you to finish up. He might get overwhelmed. This could actually be an Anderson decision, two rounds to one, but it probably shouldn't be. But it, it could actually go to decision, which is kind of crazy, but it could actually go to decision. And it could go either way if it does. Um, you know, if, if, if Adesanya doesn't get in Anderson's head or he gets hurt, you know, maybe maybe he's in his own head because he's fighting someone that he probably idolized. And that happens to a lot of young fighters. Okay, next up, Ronnie Yaha versus Ricky Simone. Ronnie Yaha, I rolled with all of once back in the day. I just happened to travel to a faraway jiu-jitsu school in Southern California because I want to check out different schools. And there was only a few people in class, and uh, I got to roll with him. And you see my interview with him after UFC on Fox 4 that he won with a more south choke. And I said, do you remember what you tapped me out with? Mind you, I wasn't using any power since I'm four times the guy's size and I could eat him. Um, but um, I wanted to see if technically he could make the little adjustments, and he tapped me out with a north-south choke. Ronnie Yaha, a great submission wizard, especially with chokes. Um, taking on Ricky Simone. Now, Ricky Simone, I coached, I think, for about two months in Portland before I went and color commentated Pancrase's first five live events for UFC Fight Pass. So I, I was uh, the grappling coach at, uh, at Rose City Fight Club uh, and coach Ricky Simone. I have a video showing an advanced uh, armbar drill guard from guard, much better than your typical armbar drill from jiu-jitsu. It starts that way, but then goes into two add-ons for the defense, the counter to the defense, and then the counter to the counter. Definitely check that video out. Um, Ricky Simone, much better wrestler. Ricky Simone, much better striker. Uh, good, pretty good boxer, good head movement. Um, one would think Simone on paper should win this. Um, let's hope that Ricky isn't winning most of the fight and then Yaha doesn't catch him in a late anaconda choke or something like that. Um, I could see it going down that way. I could see Ricky dominating the fight for two and a half rounds and in the middle of the third, Yaha possibly catching him in a choke. Or Ricky Simone by uh, TKO, KO, um, could happen as well. So, um, or Ricky by decision. You know, he might just take it all the way, decision, I'll wrestle him, I'll grapple him against the cage, uh, clinch striking against the cage, um, landing some better strikes on the outside before he gets there, stuff like that. So anyway, guys, since I've trained with some of you guys just a little bit or coached them a little bit, I thought, you know, someone might be interested. Um, and if anyone bets, win some money, you know, man, throw me a bone, dude. Take me to dinner or something. God. Um, anyway, I'm Dan the Wolfman, signing out from space, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hicks and bye, Amber.